Hello, I'm Jeff Watts. And I'm Paul Goddard. And welcome to the Agile Podcast, the show in which Paul and I discuss what Agile is really all about, over a pint or two in the pub. In each episode, we chat about our experiences as two Agile coaches in today's ever-changing world. So, grab yourself a drink in the bar, pull up a chair, and enjoy what people are saying is probably the best Agile pub-related podcast in the world. <laughs> All right. It's going to be fun. Mm. So, what you got there, mate? Oh, this is uh, Patches, Blood Orange. Very nice. It's very, it's very pink. You've had that before, haven't you? It's like, I yeah, think you've like had that on a recent brew. podcast, actually. Yes. Like Iron I Brew? I think it was, yeah, it's, um, we've had it, I've had it in a, a Cheltenham pub. In a before. Cheltenham one? Mm. Okay. I can't remember the pub, but it's, yeah. But it wasn't this one. We're in the Bays Hill today. I'm having, oh, what's it called? Horizon. I'm having a pint of Horizon from Woodworth Brewery. Very um, English, English ale. Mm. Room temperature. Oh, is it? A little it? bit of froth. Quite nice, quite nice. Yes, we're in the Bays Hill in Cheltenham, which is quite an old pub. It's gone through a few incarnations. I think it's been redone a few different times. Yeah. They used to have, um, they used to be known for having a full, like, floor to ceiling mural on the wall inside. Really? Yeah. But then it got taken over by another landlord and they, um, they painted over it. What, in, in this room in so, in, uh, I think it was in the main bar area. In the main bar. Area. We're in the back. We're at the back. In the back room. Trying not to cause a disturbance. Failing. <laughs> um, got a bit of a crowd. <laughs> um, yeah. But this is sort of an arty place. I don't know whether you saw it when, you, when we came in from the car park. There was a the big mural outside. In the yeah. Park. There was a, on the, uh, just on a brick wall, wasn't it, as we came... There's a lot of them outside. around here. We actually have a, we have a competition. There's like a, an annual... Um, I suppose I'd, it's probably not technically called a graffiti comp. It's probably called street art or something like that. Right. But effectively, yeah, people, graffiti artists will compete and they'll make these big murals. You've got this amazing one of Snape. It's probably about 80, uh, 80 square feet. Snape from Harry Potter? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, okay. Um, and like big, big um, like full size of tower blocks. I suppose tower blocks is a bit of a grand thing, but maybe you know, four stories high. Yeah. Loads of them around town. It's really, it's really good. Yeah, it's quite it's quite impressive on the um there's quite a bit of arty stuff. Well, a bit a few pub drawings on on the walls. Hmm. I'd like to be able to draw like that. Well, you can. Well, I, I you can draw better than me. I can I can I can copy. I can Yeah, I suppose I could yeah, I could copy what's on. We'll we'll put a couple of pictures actually because even on the walls in here, even um where it's not actually, you know, art as such, it's just saying, you know, there's a, a quiz night on Tuesday and over mic on Wednesday. It's I would say that is art. Oh yeah, they've too. Yeah. It's it's kind of caricature pub pub art, isn't it? Well, even when they've just written the word. So they've yeah. got a couple of champagne glasses, but they've written private hire, for example, but in a nice, colourful font. It makes it stand out. Yeah, yeah, it's made it more interesting to look at. And th- and quite a few pubs, certainly in the UK, do this. That kind of, kind of um, what do they call it? The boards that you put outside. A-frames? Well, yeah. Sandwich, sandwich boards? Sandwich boards, sandwich yeah, sandwich I suppose, boards. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that type of thing that you see as you walk past... It's not just pubs, but it's any any uh, establishment. The well, more that's where attract- we saw that that free beer tomorrow, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the more the more attractive it is to look at, the more it catches your eye, more it brings you in. Hmm. We um, we you say we we draw, mm. and we do draw in our coaching and our in our classes. We're and known for it. Well, it's it's one of the things that that people still now you know point out and and say this is this is a nice. It's a nice touch. It's a nice thing. I, I, to me, it's quite it's quite common now. I see a lot of people doing that sort of thing. It's, I, it's I more tend common than it used to be. Yeah, and it's in, it's we're still seen as quite unconventional and alternative in that sense. Yeah, because we don't do. Slides. We can run a whole two days, and when we say to people, it's like we're not going to be using PowerPoint. It's like ooh. We still get that response mm. every now and again. Ooh, you know I mean? It's like quite, quite taken aback by the fact you can do this, you can do your job without PowerPoint. And it's yeah, we can. It's got a few different names. I'm, I'm, I always tend to, my, I'm quite lazy and I call it visualization, but I don't think 
because I also call visualization close your eyes and I'm going to tell you a story I want you to imagine what I'm telling you which is visualization mm. um, some people call it visual storytelling some people call it visual facilitation I suppose graphical facilitation I don't know yeah but um yeah, I, I think there's a lot to be said for it, and it's something that you and I put a lot of effort into, but mainly for a selfish reason, because we didn't we didn't like PowerPoint, we didn't like using slides. But it it has, <coughs> I think it has a lot of benefits in terms of people processing that information rather mm. than just, and it stays there, doesn't it? You can stick it on the wall, and it's there for the whole of the day rather than one slide yeah. is gone. And beyond that, now we both keep our the good ones. We, yeah. we keep our drawings. Well, some people ask to take them home with them. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that used to be a thing, didn't it? In fact, I went into a company I won't name, but one of my friendly companies. They've still got a, a it's now tinged li- yellow. No, oh, nice. Yeah, a, a, a picture that I drew. I must have drawn it. I probably drew it five five years ago. Because in Smoker's Corner, <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's just turned nicotine yellow. Yeah, but it's uh, it's still there and it's still hung up in the in their office. And yeah, it's nice and it's a bit of a nice nice memory then, really, for me to mm. go back and see that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, well, he's bringing back a story. See, this is it. I, I, that, that I can I can see a picture, right? So I've got in my head a picture, and you'll mm. know what I'm talking about mm. because we were teaching this class together, and mm. um, at lunchtime we all went down for lunch. And I came back from lunch early, mm. and one of the guys was in the room, and he, he was just putting one of my Newland markers back. <laughs> On the table, he said, "Oh, nice pens, nice pens. Yeah, oh, I like them. These big fat marker pens. Yeah. For those of you that don't know." Um, anyway, didn't really think anything of it until a couple of days after the class, and um, a couple of the people on the class were you know, sending LinkedIn connections, mm. and then I got one from this guy, and his LinkedIn profile was him holding my Newland pen in front of one of my flip charts. No, because he'd pretended that he had drawn the flip chart that I'd created. Really? I mean, I'll take that as a compliment. I know, but it's still a bit... It's a little bit devious, isn't it? Well, it's I a little bit, um, you know... I thought it was a bit weird. It's also, it's, you know, kind of stealing someone else's th- thunder. It's like wearing someone else's clothes and claiming them that they're your own. Yeah. Strange. But, but it, I mean, sh- I think it's a... It's a it sim- takes some... some so a degree of bravery to do that in the middle of a training course when you could have walked in and you did walk in at any moment. Mm. But it's not like I was never going to see it either. No, I know. It's in the public domain. How strange. But I suppose it goes to show how much people see the value in being able to do that. It's a skill. And a lot of people, a lot more talented at it than you, know, you and I. I love the people that can do it from you know, their heads, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can, if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to draw something on a flip chart, mm. first of all, I keep it really, really simple, mm. a really simple mm. shape. But also, I will try and I'll probably copy something. If it's something I haven't done before, then I'll copy it. I'll, I'll do a Google image search. Yeah. Um, I was taught a bit of a tip on this one, which was to, if you're searching for um, fried egg or something, then put fried egg icon. Yeah. Um, Right, so uh, you just get a, an actual photograph of a fried egg, which right, is okay. easy to copy. Okay, um, so do that, or um, yeah, maybe I've got, I've got I've got an album on my phone, which has pictures of flip charts that I've done, but also ones that I've seen other people do as inspiration for fonts or yeah. images or something like that. Do you find yourself falling back on stock images, things that you know you kind of can use? Or icons that you can use in a variety of circumstances that you tend to, to fall back. If you're struggling for an idea, you think, ah, oh, just slot in one of those there. Yeah, there are, there are some pretty, I'll say, versatile yeah. icons. So a light bulb can mean a lot of different oh, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really easy to draw. Mm. Um, you know, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's some that if I'm, sh- if I'm stuck or if I'm, if I'm in a bit of a rush, I'll do. But what I used to like, teaching with you is I could be at a flip chart and you could be talking and it gives me a lot more time to think yeah. and space things out and equally when I'm talking you can be you can be drawing yeah um, as a per- I, I've, I've found very early on that I couldn't talk and draw at the same time <laughs> I couldn't talk and write at the same time because I'd end up s- writing the wrong thing mm. it's a bit like rubbing your head and patting your tummy or the other way around I, yeah. could, I couldn't never really do that but um, these graphic facilitators they do well, our good friend Stuart, used to, I don't know if he still does that type of thing, but um, 
I was just again chatting with a friend who was, had uh, just run a five hour workshop. Yes, this was yesterday or two days ago. And they had a graphic facilitator in that. Mm. And, he w- and th- I think that's the first time he's seen that happen. And he said it was absolutely incredible, just mesmerizing. Mm. Not, and it wasn't so much watching it happen. It was just the narrative of that event yeah. is captured in a very unique, unrepeatable way. Yeah. And I had Stuart come along to one of my workshops once. Did you? do that. Yeah. He was at the back and he had a whole wall of butcher paper. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and yeah, he captured the whole day. And it's brilliant. Amazing. Chris Stone ran a, a Scrum Mastery Pathway class this week. Yeah. And he, he, had a, he had a graphic facilitator on there capturing and creating visuals of it for the class as well. I thought oh, okay. it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is good. It's a great skill. And it's, um, pictures tend to stick harder than the words, don't they? And, and almost to the point now, we, me and you could be running a, co-running a class. You'd be drawing. I'm pretty sure. That maybe this is just me, but I'm pretty sure people might be looking at what you're drawing rather than listening to what I'm saying. <laughs> maybe that's just my imposter I don't think syndrome. It's, I don't think it's either or, but I think their focus. It's. I think it, it, their focus is probably on the drawing, mm. and it helps the words go in more subliminally. Whereas if they're I just looking at your face, like no offence. <laughs> no, none taken. But it's also a little bit like um, the RSA anime stuff yeah, as well, definitely. because. I remember, I mean, it's because I've watched them over and over again, but you do remember the imagery of those videos and that helps you stick the, the maybe not the exact words, mm. but certainly the thread. It helps you post it, stick the thread together. Yeah. Oh, I know. So you've also got, like I've got, um, so we've probably mentioned this many times before and we've, we've, sent, we've sent a lot of people their way. For no commission, by the way. Oh. But we've sent a lot of people to this company called Bicablo. So, I don't know, 12 years ago, maybe? It was a long time ago, wasn't it? We had Martin. Well, you, you were th- where did you get the original? From the Scrum Gathering in Amsterdam. And I saw some flip charts on Is the wall. Is that what it was? 2010? Yeah. Well, that I was, think so. That was 2010, Amsterdam. Um, yeah, I saw some flip charts on the wall. I, think I, I said to the person, I wish I could draw like that. And they said, I can't draw. And I said, obviously, you can. And they said, no, I've just been taught how to draw some simple shapes by somebody and a bit of shading and a grey pen. I said, well, I'd love to do that. And he said, oh, go and speak to Martin Houseman. So, I so Martin was there, was he? No, 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 no he wasn't. He, uh, okay. he gave me his details. So I, I emailed Martin and said, can you come over and teach me how to do this stuff? He said, yes, yes, yes. Um, but as with any quality professional, it doesn't come cheap. No. So I had to, um, well worth the money, had to get, That's I think, a r- rope a few more of eight in. more people so that we could split the cost between us. Got him over to Birmingham, a dodgy little hotel in Birmingham that we yeah, hired out. Yeah. Um, and two days, and he taught us how to draw these simple shapes and you know, framing, and it was amazing, absolutely brilliant. And that from that course, I've still got the pictures from Have it. You? Yeah, still got the pictures. And I then cr- I created on sort of half index cards about a hundred different symbols. Mm that I thought I can use these. And I'd, I carried them around with me in my laptop bag so that I could yeah. pull them out and draw them when I needed to. And it's taken them a long time. But they finally entered the 21st century and they <laughs> created an app. <laughs> well, Bickablo app. Bickablo okay. app, yeah. So they've got, and it's free, they, you can get 55 of their most you know, common icons yeah. just on your phone for free. They, obviously, you can buy other... Because um, I used to have it in like a book, yes. a book format. And I've got, okay. I've got two of them. Well, the um, ring, ring, ring bound, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, if, if you're interested in that, having having that on your phone, just you, know, you can scroll through really, really quickly and copy some really simple shapes just to f- smarten up your note taking, or even if it's just in your own notebook, not on a flip chart, just yeah, sketch noting yeah. they call it, don't they? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna I'm gonna send them a message and see if they'll give our listeners a code. Well, to, so get them, to get them so on the app. Well, yeah, I reckon we've sent enough people their way over the years. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask them. So look in the show notes. Uh, they may say no, if, in which case we'll cut that bit. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, Bickablo, graphical facility. Martin, was his name? Martin Houseman, yes. Uh, and, uh, I, remember, I remember he started the, the, the whole session and he got us all to sit down and he said, draw a dog, a cat and a mouse. Do you remember that? I do. And we were like, oh, this is so stressful. Oh, this is. And then he just made, he gave us like three things to, to, to do. The, I remember the one I remember was a mouse. Like a semicircle. Yeah, just a semicircle a with, line. A, with a line and a dot. Yeah. As we were all trying to draw this artistic you know, kind of mouse type features, he just said a semicircle, 
cur- uh, like a curl for a tail and a dot for the eye, and that, that's, that's a mouse. Dead simple stuff. Yeah, simple. Is a lot of it is a lot more si- a lot more simple than we than we actually think, and really effective. There's, there, you know, uh, there's studies out there. Again, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to research this and put some links in the show notes. But yeah. there are plenty of studies out there that show not just learning. Yeah, you know, if someone is trying to teach you, but mm. they teach with images as well as just words, that you learn more and retain more. But also, if you're teaching people, the illu- yeah, the illustration side of things helps you learn and get the Im- message across. So, if you're taking notes and you can add some images, you can yeah. add some hooks. And you know, if I ask you to think of, remember the ocean, you don't think of the letters O, you think of a picture yeah. or an image. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so from, from graffiti to uh, visual facilitation. All right. Um, what else has been happening? Oh, I, I tell you what. While we're on the theme, yeah. I, I'm going to... Oh, I can't. My phone's recording. <laughs> but I will... Um, oh, I've got my iPad. Hold on. Let me... We'll pause uh, the tape. Uh, pause. 19 minutes. And I'm going to pretend I'm showing you yeah. a video. So, And we're back. So, uh, on I've got this Instagram video mm. saved, mm. and I'll I'll describe what I'm showing Paul. So, there's a a woman in a nice f- fancy dress, right? Uh, kneeling down on the floor, right? Uh, with a glass of red wine in her hand, right? And a big sheet of white paper, and she starts pouring the wine glass, and you think she's just pouring her wine away. But then she just starts swishing it around. And I'll, it doesn't take long. There's a bit of a, a time lapse there. But in fact, she draws a, a self-portrait out of wine. And it's incredible. It's incredible. Wow. Actually, I can show you one here, can't I? So she pours herself a glass of wine. She starts pouring it on the paper. Mm. And just with the bottom of the glass, she's just... This one, s- just one hand. Just, oh, yeah. She's having a drink. A little drink, yeah. A little sip. A little paintbrush. And you start seeing... And it, sta- it, and it starts to seep into the paper. Yeah. Oh, my days. This is just with red wine. One, there's no colour in it. It's just one glass of red well, wine. So she's going over and over it again if she wants to go darker. That's incredible. She's in a fit, but fingers and a... Or not, she's doing in there. She's adding some yellow there. That is amazing. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people that would say that's a waste of wine, but I think that's a pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty it's impressive a good waste. picture, right? We'll give her a mention. What's her name? Martina. Uh, so Arts Flu is her Twitter handle. Arts Flu. Wow. I don't know what her actual name is, but that's uh, incredible. But so just I'm putting that forward with my champagne moment. Oh, okay. By the way. Champagne moment. Yeah. yeah. Not really champagne, but red wine moment of the week, maybe. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's good. Yes. So I've got. I've got. I think I've come up with two two uh, potentials for being barred to new uh, people who are going to throw out of our virtual pub well I'll, I'll let you decide I'll put them forward and you decide alright you're barred so the first one is Microsoft PowerPoint what all together yeah right okay <laughs> as a tool right uh, and the second is that guy who took a picture in front of my <laughs> in front of my flip chart for his LinkedIn profile picture. So you you have the power to ban. We'll call him Ian. I don't okay. I don't know what his real name is. Right. I can't remember his real okay. name. Is. We'll call him Ian. You can either bar PowerPoint or Ian. I don't think I can. Uh, I don't think I can. I don't think I have the authority to ban a whole. You piece do. of software. I mean, we'd banned oh, Jira before, well, didn't we? We did. We did. Yeah, we did actually. But to be to give to, to, from a balanced argument point of view, there's a there's an aspect of PowerPoint. Even for saying that, see, I use Canva now instead of PowerPoint. Okay. If I just want an image, I used to use PowerPoint just for a, a static image. Yep. And because it, it's easier to drag and drop stuff, but I use Canva for that now instead. Of, uh, anyway, so. But I don't. I still think. I still think PowerPoint has maybe a wider use. In it some could be instances. used well. Yeah. Just because it's abused. By however, now. however, the 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 sheer gall of someone to stand in front of someone else's flip chart 
and hold their pen and and pose did he do was it a selfie did he take his own picture he must have got someone else to take the picture so there was there was two there was a conspirator as yeah, well yeah I guess so so the um, the sheer you know bare faced cheek that's the word to do that on a training course with someone who's drawn something that you didn't draw and then claim it as your own I think for me is is worthy of being barred from okay. my pub so we're barring Ian yeah you're barred uh, you'd be Ian you're barred oh okay sorry Pub notice board. Anything for the pub notice board this week, Jeff? Pub notice board. <laughs> <laughs> have, we got a, have we got a jingle for that? Yeah, I've got that. Excellent. Sorted that one. Um, yes. Well, I've got a couple of things that I'll throw out there. I'm doing a couple of free webinars. Oh, are you? Yeah. Uh, so either this week or next week, I can tell you the dates. They're written down here. So um, one of them I'm doing on my on my Todd on my own. On your little lonesome. Yeah. It's called Milestone. Magic. I know it says Milestone Mastery there, but it's called Milestone Magic. Mm. Um, where we're going to be, this is on the 22nd of March, and we're doing that in conjunction with Agile Stationery, mm -hmm. who have their own meetup group. And I'm going to be showing people how they can use the concept of team milestones to help grow the mastery of their team, okay. self management, self organization, and yeah, high. What do they call it? High performance. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that one. And then the very next day, so I'm doing two in two days. Mm. Um, but this one I'm, I'm doing with Roman. Okay. Roman Pichler. My good friend Roman. We're doing, we're doing a webinar on the house of the product coach. That sounds like a, a, a film title. Mm. It sounds like a Game of Thrones type Intriguing, thing. Intriguing, right? Yeah. Mm. So we're going to be deconstructing the new role on the block. Okay. So the product coach is the new role. Uh, well, relatively new role, but it's getting a lot of attention. We're going to be talking about what is it. Um, let you into a bit of a, a bit of a sneak preview. Roman has one idea. I have another. Ooh. So we're going to have a bit of a friendly debate. Bit of a head-to-head. -to -head. I hope, hopefully, you're going to argue respectfully, like Absolutely. we talked about in our previous episode. See Absolutely. episode three for that. We we should probably announce the winner of. Oh, we need. We had a competition running last yeah, week. Last the competition. Time. So the competition was to come up with a new name for our virtual pub for when Jeff and I can't be in a, a lovely pub like this all the time. So we need something virtual that we can meet in from, from home. Mm -hmm. We had quite a few entries, Jeff. Yeah, thank you for that. We didn't thank you to everyone for, uh, for, for entering. We did say we'd offer a prize to our yeah. favourite. What is the prize? Well, there'll be some merchandise, I imagine. Some, we can some Agile Pubcast merchandise. Yeah, we can nice. throw, throw something together and uh, get that in the post to you. So lots of entries. Thank you very much yeah. for those. You give us a bit of a, you know, a highlight. I give you, I give you a, yeah, a few tasters as to what didn't, you know, kind of also rans or uh, nearlies that nearly made it. We have picked a winner. Um, we had the endless waterfall. Okay. We had uh, Flo's Tavern. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, we had. The, I, I did like the just in time. I thought that was very good. In um, I double N. Just yeah, in good. time. Yeah. And the the valuable increment. Which again, so yeah, a bit, bit of a in. mystery, uh, mystery kind of sounding name. But we we have I've picked we've picked yeah. the winner, our favourite. I picked it, um, and well done to Rich Cook. <laughs> well done, Rich. Your name of the Coach House. I'll repeat that. The Coach House has been chosen as the new name for our virtual pub. So well done to Rich. We'll get some goodies in the uh, post to you if you send us your details either on LinkedIn or on Twitter. Yes, well done, Rich. So, yeah, I, I, we like that because, obviously, there's an element of coaching, and historically, pub, a lot of pubs were literally coach houses yeah. where you would stop over on a long journey and you know, you'd, you'd, you'd tie, the, tie the horses up in the stables and yeah, tie the coach up, and it'd be a little rest stop. Very good. So the coach house. Yeah, so stay tuned. Um, for there'll be a few more episodes that that come out in the uh, not too distant future some of which will be from our new virtual pub hmm. the coach house yeah well done rich pub quiz are you are you up for a bit of a challenge yes always jeff so it's not it's not really a pub quiz but i suppose we could call it a pub quiz pub quiz pub quiz um I've got, seeing as I've got my iPad out, I was thinking maybe 
we could do a bit of a test yeah and see if you can draw something and i see if i can guess what it is okay all right so if i can if i can guess what it is you get a point how about that and so we need to do a bit of a screen record so that we can put it oh hello what have i done there uh undo the color it. i don't even know you do screen recording yeah oh very good so my drawing yeah so you need to draw something and uh, I need to guess what it is. So any particular theme or any, any, oh, any I, clue? I, I would say something. I'd say something agile related, but um, something agile related. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this isn't a great one for listening, but I'll try and describe what he's doing. Okay. Something agile related. Um. Okay, so we've got a vertical line, horizontal line. Looks like looks like the beginning of a box. Oh, it looks like a post-it note. Oh, it's close, Jeff. Or some kind of letter, uh, user story. Yes, very good. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yes, yeah, yeah, I see. So That's a little... Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? So that, that little turned-over corner is like a almost a universal symbol of a document, isn't it? Yeah. And um, we were also told that just you could put a little... The, the, the idea of so you've got lots multiple of them, of them stacked together. Lots of them stacked good. together, like a pile of, pile of user stories. Um, what else have we got? Well, keep it clean. You've got dirty minds. So two circles, a bit like a darts board with a, with a stick underneath it. Oh, magnifying glass. Yes, magnifying yes. glass. Very good. Another versatile symbol. Mm. Could mean a lot mm. of things. Could be investigation, could be analysis, could yeah. be yeah, I'm thinking. I'm ready to motor now. Here, we, here comes the next one. Say what you see. Okay, so a little bit of a box, bigger box on the end of it. Maybe a torch. Uh, uh, telescope. Yes. Telescope. telescope. Oh, there's an eye. Yeah, yeah very good. Some eyelashes. So that can be, you know, looking forward. It could be on the horizon. It could be vision. It could be mm. the future. It could be, yeah, lots of different things. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, my favorite. This is one of my favorites. I, used to, I still do draw this one a lot. It's like a musical note. Oh, um, oh, I reckon I know what that is. That's um, like a bear trap, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. And so for any of you that are end. watching, y you can see here you don't actually need any inherent artistic talent <laughs> to be able to do this. <laughs> what are you saying, like? <laughs> what are you saying, like? <laughs> okay, go on, then. So I feel I like you should have a go. Well, now. I was going to say, if, um, all right, go on then. So on, let's you, you change it up. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say what you see. Well, how about you give me something and I have to try and come up with a... This is going to be harder. Harder. You tell me Level something up. and I'll see what, if I like can... A, like a concept create a theory. Some, you know, draw something to illustrate that simply. Um, planning poker. Planning poker. Okay, so I'd probably have a really simple person, as in a simple representation of a person, <laughs> who has you know, an arm here with a deck of cards in their hands, or at least some cards in their hand. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have uh, some kind of table mm. with other people sat around it. I'd have a card on the table for each of them, and then a user story in the middle of the table. Mm. And then everyone looking really happy. <laughs> uh, and I'd probably have a little sprint planning board behind them with some benchmarks. Mm. One, 13, how about that? Very good, very good. Poker. Very nice, I It's like, like Pictionary at Christmas, isn't it? It's good. Okay. You'd be, you'd be worryingly good at Pictionary now. So that was, that was a bit over, overkill really, wasn't it? If you really wanted a, a you simplistic- You just do a set of cards. So you could do just some poker chips with some cards mm. as a symbol and you've got one, two, mm. three, and then five that would be enough yeah as a symbol to indicate planning poker all right then i'll give you a different one okay uh, how would you how would you symbolize prioritization prioritization i said more general okay. theme so i mean as a general theme i would probably draw some scales okay like the balance of justice yeah with different things on it. So you can see that one thing is more important than the other. Uh, okay. So balancing things against each other. Yeah. Um, they, 
I'll often do a so this is sort of bringing two aspects of what we've been talking about together often talk about an iceberg with product owners when it comes to prioritization yeah. because the things at the top there should be less of them yeah and the things at the bottom underneath the we don't need to worry, no, worry about how big they are yet. yeah um, so I might I might use that as a metaphor yeah okay or um, actually I'd, I'd probably use something similar to that previous drawing of planning poker because I do I'd have a user story and then I'd have you know, maybe some Jeff dollars in the bottom corner <laughs> to show the value of something yeah very good excellent one more yeah go for it all right then let's go with your uh, your uh, your go-to subject your special subject the scrum master role Ooh, see now that's tricky and i have actually just just this is a bit of a um plug i suppose but i've just i mean it's free i don't make any money <laughs> out of it but i've just released a video that i've had created called the scrum master in a nutshell which I've collaborated with somebody on. Okay. And so what we what we ended up coming up with as a represent representation of a scrum master was somebody who had on effectively a, a like a superhero costume mm. with SM on it because that stands for scrum uh, scrum master, but also stands and for Superman. Superman, yeah. Right? So they'd have like a cape mm. on them. Uh, so that would be uh, my um, almost symbol. Mm. I might throw in, you know, a pen. Yeah. On a flip chart because they do a lot of yeah. facilitation on a flip chart. The one that I, I'm, I Paul's picked up the pen now, everyone. Um, so the one that I remember and I think was uh, I still use is that one. Yep. He's got the whole team in his hands. So yeah, a, a, a person holding up, serving, literally serving, like like on a on a platter, serving the team. Um, so kind of kind of a literal representation there of what a scrum master is trying yeah, to both do. Both literal and figurative. Yeah, like it, like it. Yeah, uh, maybe um, we could test our our audience interactivity, mm. and maybe they could. What can you? You can't really do images in comments, can you? I suppose. No, but I. Th I've I don't know, there must be a way. Could they share? Insta Insta what about Instagram? Can they do yes. that? Yes. Use the old Instagram. So we um, are on Instagram. That might be a way to try and get people on to, to look at it through Instagram. So I maybe you could... We should give them a challenge of, a, of something that they need to oh, yes. uh, represent. And then, again, send this in your answers for that. Yes. So, so then we need a hashtag, don't we? Yeah. So, well, or tag us. Yeah, so you tag, tag at the Agile podcast yeah and then we'll have hashtag viz viz fac agile viz agile viz agile okay and so the challenge is to draw something that represents that represents some aspect of agile yeah all right and that you can look at it and you think i know what that is without any words without having to check the comments yeah okay yeah and we will we'll pick the best and we'll give another prize. And we'll, yeah, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll uh, offer another prize up for that. And we'll obviously showcase and repost the the winner, the winning awesome. entry. Very good. How about that? Well, Love there we that. go. Love it, Jeff. All right. Um, last orders. Yes, it's that time. Last orders. So I did. This isn't going to be very snappy necessarily, but I did hear somebody say, don't drink and draw. Okay. But I might, I might actually challenge that because you and I were quite nervous about drawing, quite self-conscious yeah. about drawing. And a lot yeah. of people are. They often say, I can't draw. Yeah. And, but often if you've had a drink and you're playing Pictionary, then you, know, you let your inhibitions go. And That's true. That's true. Um, so maybe drink and draw. But, yeah. And there's um, a nice drinking... Uh, <laughs> drink, no, wrong, word, wrong word. Drawing challenge is... Um, is to do, try and you can try this with your teams at home. You can have this for free. Is to do five what they call five second scribbles. Okay. So you give it could be something simple like an uh, an elephant or a guitar, um, something fairly well understood as an object. Right. Challenge your team to draw it, but they've got to draw it within five seconds. And the idea of, of its quick fire 
is it takes some of the inhibition away because I've just got to, I've only got five, everyone's got five seconds. Yes. Draw as fast as you can. Yes. It's it's not going to be great. We're not artists. We're just having some fun with it. Okay. Just to get past that first barrier. Nice one. All right. Oh, I look forward to seeing the entries in the in the latest competition. I didn't realize we we're going to have a competition every no. time. Maybe. You can't knows? keep giving stuff away, Jeff. Oh, why not? <laughs> only live once. Yeah. True. All right. Well, um, remember drink and sprint responsibly Responsibly. and we will see you again soon cheers all cheers jeff hi there quick update so postscript Uh, since recording that episode we did reach out to pick a bloke the lovely people there and they have indeed agreed to give us a wonderful unique discount code for you to get some money off their visual dictionaries in their app so go and download it there's a link in the show notes uh, maybe even appearing on the screen right now who knows uh, and you can get some money off. Also, a little bit of an update since uh, Paul and I managed to convince Martin to come over to uh, that hotel in, in Birmingham and teach us how to draw. Uh, they've got lots and lots of different trained, highly qualified, highly experienced visual storytellers and trainers in almost every part of the world. So almost wherever you are, you can find somebody from Bickerblow to help you, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. So can't recommend can't recommend them highly enough. Check them out. You carry on. You've got characters here. <laughs> You'll make millions. Do you know Coronation Street? We're better than that. And Toby was the best pub ever in Cheltenham, right? Yeah. So if you want to monitor it, I'll take all the internet what people just come in. <laughs> uh, the bloke who's a driver up on the pave, pavement outside the pub, the police would come in. Oh, you can't park your car there. Oh, what? He said, because I'm going to park my car here. And he come every week and get to drive the car off. Right? So, next week they put cameras. The first pub in Cheltenham and England put cameras. So, someone threw a car and known through the window. That's the... <laughs> I mean, it's a story, isn't it? But my, my <laughs> uncle was drumming and it landed on his drum kit. And he thought, oh, I'll take that little bloody thing a bit of my garden. You need to go on Would I Lie to You. Would I Lie to You, see? You need to go on that show. Uh, what do you mean, shit? No, we are not seen shit. it. Have you not seen it? No, no. The TV show. The TV, the TV show. show. I'm not into it, see. You have to tell a story. Yeah. And people have to tell whether you're lying or not. Yeah. And if, you, if, you, if you're lying and they don't think you are lying, you win. Yeah. Mm. If you're telling the truth and well, you think you're lying, can you coach, can you be my manager? As maybe <laughs> if you let me do this podcast. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Hey, it can be a manager. A lawyer is a liar, and a liar is he's a liar. He's in the plan the crack. <laughs> so you got you got a good thing here with us, boys. I always bend this way. Everybody I'm knows the crack. Look at the crack. Look at the crack. Like this. A liar the crack. is a lawyer, and a lawyer is a liar. <laughs> It's good. Can you bend that one here? Yeah. Okay. We're all gone past, though. I can't read it. 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 I can't